Hi guys, so unit 6, day 1, solving rational equations. So a rational equation is any equation that contains at least one rational expression. So like 4 over x minus 4 plus x over x plus 1 equals x squared plus 4 over x plus 1. That's a rational equation. Okay? And then those are the steps to solving them. So you can look at those if you want. Keep them there. So, we need to solve this, and we need to check our solutions. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the denominator. And you clear the denominator by finding the common denominator and multiplying by that. So, let's just look at all of our denominators here. We have P, we have 3P, and we have P again. When the denominators look like this, I want you to look at the biggest one. So 3p here is our biggest denominator, I guess you can say. Does p go into 3p? It does. So my least common denominator is 3p. Okay. Now I need to state my restrictions. You cannot forget to state restrictions. Okay. Remember last unit when we were stating restrictions, we have to remember to continue to do that this unit. Okay. So I have 3p cannot equal 0 which just means p cannot equal 0. Okay, so now that I found my least common denominator, I found my restriction, I'm going to multiply everything by the least common denominator, so by 3p. So I have 3p times p minus 4 over p, and 3p times 1 over 3p, and 3p times 1 over p. Now to make this a little bit easier for myself, I'm just going to put those all over 1. Because you can always put anything over 1. And now, I just need to simplify each of these rational expressions separately. So 3p over 1 times p minus 4 over p. The p's cancel there. So I'm just left with the 3 on top. 3 over 3p times 1 over 3p. The 3 p's cancel. And in the last one, my p's cancel. Okay, so I'm left with 3 times p minus 4 plus 1 plus 3 times 1. So when I multiply that all out, I get 3p minus 12 plus 1 equals 3. Then I'm just going to solve this. So that's 3p minus 11 equals 3. Add the 11 over 3p equals 14. So p equals 14 over 3. And I'm just going to leave that as a fraction. That's completely fine. Just leave it as a fraction. 14 over 3 is not 0, so we're good. That's our final answer there. Okay. Let's look at another one. So I have 1 over 3r equals 1 over 6r minus r minus 5 over 6r. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the subtraction sign. That's what we always do with the subtraction. You always distribute it first. So I'm going to distribute that subtraction sign. I get negative 4 or negative r plus 5. Now, I'm going to find my common denominator. So I have 3r, 6r, and 6r. I'm going to look at the biggest one. Can 3r go into 6r? It can. So 6r is our least common denominator. The restriction, 6r cannot equal 0, which means r cannot equal 0. And now I'm going to multiply everything by 6r. And I'm just going to put those over 1 to make this a little bit easier for myself. Okay. So in that first one, those R's cancel, and 3 goes into 6 twice, so I'm left with a 2 on top. That second one, 6R, cancels with 6R. Last one, our 6R's cancel. So I'm left with 2 times 1 equals 1 plus negative R plus 5. Get rid of those parentheses, you get 2 equals 1 minus R plus 5 which is 2 equals negative r plus 6. Subtract that 6 over, you get negative 4 equals negative r, which means r equals positive 4, because you can divide a negative out of both of those. 4 is not 0, so we're good. That is our final answer there. Okay? Let's do one more. So... <clears throat> First, I need to find my least common denominator. Actually, I'm going to go back real quick. So, that's a subtraction sign. Always distribute that subtraction sign. Okay, don't be like me. Don't forget. 
So distribute that subtraction sign first. Now I need to find my least common denominator. So I have p squared, 3p squared, and p. So p squared goes into 3p squared. p goes into 3p squared. So 3p squared is my least common denominator. Now I'm going to have 3p squared cannot equal 0, which means p cannot equal 0. And I'm going to multiply that to every single fraction. So I have 3p squared times 5 over p squared equals that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just going to put them over 1 to make it a le little bit easier. So in that first one, the p squareds cancel. Second one, 3p squareds cancel. Third one, just the p's cancel. So I'm still left with 3p up top. So here I'm left with 3 times 5 equals 2 plus 3p times negative 1, which is 15 equals 2 minus 3p. Subtract that 2 over, you get 13 equals negative 3p. Divide by negative 3, so you get p equals negative 13 over 3, which is not 0, so we're good. That's our final answer. Okay, please remember to take the quiz, and I will see you guys tomorrow.